Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. And this time it's really a quick tip, look at the video, it's not a long timestamp. So this time we are going to talk about a question I got and this came from Peter Bukur and he asks what's the difference between a absorption and a transmission. So this falls into the glass bottle topic we had last week. And we are going to answer this real quick in this quick tip. So let's get going. Let me show you what we are going to do today. So we have those two materials here that look very similar. But if I apply that material to the bottle, the appearance is much different than for this one. And obviously the difference is a absorption versus a transmission. And we are going to look at this and how to make this material next. After last week's video was a bit on the longer side of things, probably one of the longest videos I ever made, I decided to make a really short one this time. So let's start right up by making the material from scratch by going to materials and then go for a specular material here. Then make sure the specular material has a transmission of one. And also make sure the index is set to 1.5. In newer Octane versions, they changed that and it's 1.5 by default now. Let's call our glass material glass absorption and also apply it to the bottle and then make it active. Here we go. As you can see, this makes a pretty good glass bottle already, but we can make it more perfect, more realistic and in making it perfect, we are adding imperfections to it. For example, glass, of course, and this is what the whole topic here is about, is usually slightly tinted, colored, so we will make that. And also, if you look through a real-world bottle and turn it, you can see some wobbliness in the refractions. And we are going to do that here as well by using noise. So what we are going to do is using our old noise trick. So we are going to make an octane noise and pipe it directly into the bump for now. And you can see there's some distortion going on. And this is mainly because our bottle has a UV tag here. So octane is using UVs, but those UVs are distorted because we didn't care about them. And therefore we need to use something else. So what we're going to use is a projection. And in this projection, we are going to use a XY set to UVW, which makes the noise 3D and move through the bottle. Of course, this is unnaturalistic strong right now. So we need to lower that. And we do that by going to the glass material bump and then go to the bump height here. And I already know the value 0.001. I usually have this amount for all my objects here because I'm working in a rather small scene scale. You can also see we get now a much more realistic representation and smaller bump scales as you are used to from glass bottles. But we are not done yet. Let's go back to the noise here. And what I want to do is raise the octaves. So if we go to solo mode and raise the octaves, you can see what it's doing it basically adds more detail to the bottle. Maybe it's not as obvious, but if we go the other way around and lower the octaves, you can see the noise is now very smooth. And by going up, you get more detail into it. Now there's another slider, this is the Omega here. And this is basically saying how much of the newly introduced detail is showing. So if we go to one, all the detail is showing. If you go to zero, just it's the same as octave set to one. Now what we want to do is go a little bit lower on the detail here. So I'm setting it to 0.375. Here we go. Now let's show what this looks like with the bottle turned on. So let's see the glass material and we can see there's a little bit of distortion going on and this is just the amount we want. If you want to learn more about the new settings as the bump setting here in Octane, you can watch my new features video for Octane 2023.1. Let's finally introduce the star of the show, which is the coloring. So let's get a RGB spectrum and Peter Bukur would have used that in the transmission. So if we do that too, 
we introduce a 0.9 value in the transmission again, so the bottle gets darker. Now, this doesn't matter that much, so let's just make the color that we want somewhere like this. So when we look at the bottle, it looks somewhat realistic, but not quite. And this is the difference between the absorption and the transmission. So when we go to the material here and create an absorption by going to medium and then create an absorption medium. And then what we want to do is just plug the texture in here in the absorption instead of the transmission. You can see we get a much more realistic behavior of the bottle. Now within the absorption, we can use the density to apply more or less absorption. So if we make that higher, we get a darker bottle. Let me invite you to follow me into chart time to experience this a little bit more up close and know what's happening. Welcome to chart time. Now this is just the whole light interaction with objects. But what we are going to look at today is just a fraction of that, a refraction. So we are basically interested what light is doing when it enters the medium or the bottle in our case and then exits again and moves onward to our camera. So let's have a look what happens with transmission first. When we have a ray entering the bottle at the exact boundary condition, the colors of our RGB spectrum are going to be multiplied to our ray. So it gets green, for example. And it stays this way unless it has another encounter with the boundary condition, for example, when it leaves the bottle again. Then again, those same colors are multiplied on the already existing colors to that ray. That basically looks like what glass is doing. So as the ray interacts more with the glass, it gets darker because there is some energy loss happening. But the unrealistic thing is that the energy loss is happening at the boundary conditions. So to understand that, let's have a look at the absorption next. In contrast to transmission, the color isn't given at the boundary condition. Yes, that rhymes again, but is multiplied over the length the ray is traveling through the medium, which is much more analog to real world glass where pigment is mixed in and the light rays as it's traveling through the glass is more and more picking up the colors of those pigments. This of course also means that if light travels a shorter distance through the absorption, then it will be lighter than if it would traveling through a longer distance. To memorize such abstract things better, I usually anchor them into reality. So for me, the analog to transmission would be if you would paint your glass. So you have a thin paint layer with a color that whenever lights get through, it gets colored this way. Whereas absorption is easy to remember, it's like ink filled into water. The water cannot hold paint on the surface, so the whole body of the water or glass needs to be colored. I have a small anecdote. So I had Christmas candle holders from IKEA that were bright red, and I thought they were absorbent until I dropped one. And to my surprise, the red color was chipped away and underneath there was white glass. So while not usual the case, it can actually happen in reality that something as transmission is indeed correct. Welcome back to our 3D scene. Let's finish up our material with an absorption as we learned that transmission is not realistic in most of the cases. Let's stick with absorption and then do a couple of changes to make this even more realistic. The first thing to note is that our bottle is really green and almost neon-like, and this comes from the green spectrum being one. This means that all the green colors are let through the bottle and have no absorption at all. And this is not realistic. Usually you have a little bit absorption at least. So let's set this green value to 0.9 here. This makes our bottle a lot darker all of a sudden, so we can counter that by going to the absorption and for example, set the density to 250. And then also the color changed because we changed some of our spectrum. So what I want to do is go to red and set it to 0.75 and to the blue and set it to 0.65. Here we go. The only time I really use transmission if I have objects with vastly different thicknesses and I want to keep the same colors on them. 
because if we had a blob of glass, for example, let's make a sphere here and just apply the same material to it, you can see this is a lot darker because the light has to travel through a lot more thickness here and therefore it's more dark. So if you want to keep this the same color, you can actually use transmission and therefore keep it the same color and this is an artistic choice. Let's round off this video by ending it with a quick tip within a quick tip. So if you're using absorption, what can happen is that you get those dark portions in your bottle that can look a bit unrealistic. For example here, especially in the neck region. The first thing that would come to mind is to increase the specular depth. But even at some point here, there is more absorption than specular depth. So you end up with a black value anyway. So yet again, the thing to do is to look at reality and what's different between our bottle simulation and real bottles. So basically, if you know a little bit of physics, then you know that absorption is just a part of scattering. And what we can do is go to our glass and exchange the node with a scattering node. And you can see that it has an absorption input. So if we apply that color here and also make the density the same as before, 250, you end up with the same result. Now, in contrast to what we have before, we also have the scattering port here. So what we can do is go with a float texture and add a little bit of scattering to the bottle as well. Now, this looks like shade here, but if we do it right, for example, lower the float value like a lot to 0.1, for example, you can see that the scattering is not that strong anymore, but our dark portions are gone. And this is basically what happens in reality as well. This effect might still be a little bit strong, so let's go with a scattering of 0.075. Here we go. So it's not completely black, but also very dark green, which looks much more realistic than what we had before with the black values. And this is already it for this week and also for this year, as next week it's Christmas and the week after it's New Year, and I won't be doing tutorials over the holidays leaves me to wish you the best of times, great holidays, a very merry Christmas and a good new year. All the best for next year with lots of tutorials, also Blender if you have seen the teaser in last video. And also thank our Patreons for the success in this year. Such as my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Thank you so very much. Also, a huge thanks for my 15 euro tier subscribers Abraham Torna, AB Studio, Alessio De Vecchi, Alex Wilson, Bavana, BVR, Christian Grajewski, Computer Generated, Etienne Schmidt, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Choi Shikoline, Just a Freakin, Chris Clemson, Lutger, Part 1 of 2, Quark and Dang, Raiko, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Reshock, Rory H., Shamos Johnson, Terry Wayne Renson, Yasin Rupp, and Shibu Shang. All right, so this week's and this year's tutorial ends with a short 10 minute one. I know that quick tips are associated with stuff shorter than 10 minutes, but it's short for my terms. If you watched until now and want to show your support, let's post a Christmas tree for the occasion in the comments down below. Thank you very much. Again, very happy holidays and a good new year. I hope you have fun absorbing all your Christmas presents and all the food you will get. Until next year and have a good one. Bye.